Are you afraid of the ocean? How about now? These freaks of nature will ever make you think of stepping foot in the ocean again. From seamlessly invisible critters, camouflage of rocks sending you to Davy Jones' locker with just a single poke, to massive beasts who would love nothing more than to swallow you whole, here are 15 of the most dangerous creatures in the ocean, and the first one is absolutely terrifying. This is the shark fin Mako shark, and when this thing gets moving, you do not want to be in its way. Imagine if you took a 12 foot long torpedo, slapped on some fins, and gave it a pair of blade filled razor tooth jaws with a bite force greater than any shark in the world. Yep, that's basically the shark fin Mako. Now don't get me wrong here, this Mako shark doesn't just look like a torpedo, it literally is one, reaching speeds of up to 60 miles per hour. While these bad boys may not have the size of a great white shark, what they lack in bulk, they sure make up for in speed. But if their speed wasn't impressive enough for you, let's talk about their intelligence. Their diet typically includes tuna and billfish, which are in themselves pretty smart creatures, which makes them hard to catch. But Mako sharks are no dummy. They got brains to match their brawn. In fact, their brains compared to their body size is the largest of any sharks, making them the most intelligent sharks in the ocean. But don't expect a Mako shark to be solving any math equations anytime soon. But if this shark isn't scary to you, the rest of these creatures are, and they get even scarier with each one. Up next, we have the needlefish. How is this tiny little fish that looks like a character that came from SpongeBob one of the scariest creatures in the ocean. Well, you'd be shocked to know that the fishermen who spend time in these waters consider them even more dangerous than sharks. But they aren't exactly threatening in the way you might think since they don't have any poison and they can't eat you. Instead, it's their beak-like snout you need to be worried about. The needlefish is like a downsized swordfish with a bony spear coming out of his face that's quite sharp on the end. And the thing is, they like to yeet out the water whenever they see something on the surface. Imagine you're out there on an open ocean minding your own business when all of a sudden, wham! you feel a sharp jab. And no, it's not your buddy playing underwater pranks on you again. Now picture hundreds of them popping out the water hurtling towards you. They don't seem so harmless now, do they? Now let's dive into the murky waters of the saltwater crocodile who is the undisputed heavyweight champion of the crocodilian world. Okay, so what's the deal with saltwater crocs? Well, first off, they're not just your average reptile lying around in the sun. Nope, these guys are apex predators ruling the Indo-Pacific. They can even grow up to over 20 feet and weigh as much as a small car. But saltwater crocs aren't just big and scary. They're also sneaky. These stealthy hunters lurk right below the water surface with their eyes poking out of water like a leather submarine. They stay like this for hours waiting for the perfect moment to strike while an unsuspecting prey right next to them has no clue what's about to come towards them. When the right moment comes, they jump out of the water grabbing right whatever's in front of them and then it's game over, bro. Oh, and did I mention that saltwater crocodiles have a finishing move called the death roll? When they lock onto something with their jaws, they spin around like a tornado tearing their prey apart. But that's not even the worst part though. You see, the thing about saltwater crocodiles is that they can thrive at just about anywhere. From freshwater rivers to oceans, they can practically go anywhere where there's water. This includes your backyard where there's a swimming pool. Hey, if they even find a way in your bathtub, they'll be there. This next one is like a nightmare come true because if dealing with snakes on land wasn't bad enough, now we have to keep an eye for them in the water too. But these aren't your average garden variety snakes though. Although they can't hold their breath for too long, unlike fish and they do need to come to the surface for air to breathe, they've adapted well in the ocean. Plus these oceanatic nomads don't stick to one place either. They like to slither there everywhere from the Indian Ocean to the Pacific Ocean down to Africa and all the way to Australia, bro. And let me tell you, the venom that these snakes pack is no joke either. But after a bite, most people only experience symptoms like nausea and some pain. However, in worst cases, it can lead to heart failure. The cone snail is a creature that screams, don't judge a book by its cover. The first thing that you'll see when you come across one of these is a beautiful shell hidden amongst rocks that you want to take home as a souvenir from your trip. You don't want to grab this seashell. And even though they are venomous like other snails, it takes them less than a second to stick out their harpoon with anything within striking distance. This isn't your average snail from SpongeBob. The freaky thing about their venom is like a cocktail of different type of toxins, making the cone snail one of the most venomous creatures in the entire world. They've been responsible for over 30 fatal encounters. Luckily though, these encounters aren't quite common since they aren't found on beaches. Instead, they're native to the Caribbean Sea. Hey, does anyone remember seeing them on a Pirates of the Caribbean? But this is where things actually start to get very interesting. Scientists believe that we can use cone snail venom to treat different types of diseases like epilepsy. So are they a life-threatened creature or are they a secret cure for mankind? You decide. All right, now we're on to the big leagues, literally. The majestic black and white killer whale does exactly what its name suggests. You can call them the final boss of the ocean because they're the ultimate predator. They're capable of taking down seals, sea lions, dolphins, sharks, and even other whales. But here's something funny. Killer whales aren't actually whales. Instead, they're just a large member of the dolphin family. Hey guys, I have an odd feeling we have our imposter among us. But don't be fooled. 
They're far from being cute and friendly like a dolphin. They work together in packs and their favorite food are seals who are stranded on drifting icebergs desperately clinging to the last bit of ground. Killer whales initiate the attack by circling below and then using their collective strength, they create waves that slowly chip away at the iceberg until there's nowhere left to hide. Eventually, their prey gets knocked off of what's left of the iceberg. While they're generally friendly towards humans, I'd like to steer clear away from anything with killer in its name. Orca does sound much safer when you say it, my favorite name for them are wolves of the sea. When you see this cute little fish floating around like a deflating balloon in the ocean, it's kind of hard to take it seriously. But you'd be surprised about the damage a puffer fish can do. Instead of chasing its targets down, the puffer fish decides just to wait it out until the target gets close enough. When the time is right, it rapidly sucks in enough water to create a powerful suction that sucks its prey in and swallows it whole. While it doesn't have any fancy claws or teeth, the puffer fish has a lethal dose of toxin called tetrodotoxin, which is 1200 times more potent than cyanide. On top of that, there's enough toxin in just one of these to kill 30 adult humans. And the scariest part, there is no known antidote. Quite strangely enough, it's considered a delicacy in some parts of the world, and it does cause 100 deaths a year from eating it. Bro, you'd never catch me eating something like that. You remember that scene in Finding Nemo when Marlon and Dory came across something like a flashing light bulb in the ocean? But it actually turned out to be a scary monster with sharp razor-like teeth? Yeah, that thing is real. It's called an anglerfish, and it really does have a light bulb hanging off the top of his head. Okay, in what world does this monstrosity look like a fish? The anglerfish lurk in the dark, waiting for its prey to be attracted by its light until suddenly it gets closer and closer and closer until wham! Their jaws snap on their prey and it's over. And just when you thought that horror story ended, there's more. You see, the angler fish doesn't have to move forward when its prey is close enough. Instead, its large mouth extends forward, engulfing its prey whole. I don't know about you guys, but I'm glad this fish, if you want to call it that, lives so far deep in the ocean that no human really ever comes close to. Next up, we have the giant moray eel. And yes, this is the largest of all eel species, reaching over three meters long. That's like two children vertically stacked on top of each other. Hey bro, that's actually taller than me though. Unlike his shocking cousin, the electric eel, which zaps its prey with hundreds of volts of electricity, the giant moray eel relies on an old school method of chase and kill the prey. And man, are they good at it too. And any fish that stumbles into the giant murray's territory turns into sushi with one quick bite of its canines. And if that isn't terrifying enough, they actually have a second set of jaws in their throat. One time a giant murray eel bit a human being with its unforgiving bite and it took two hours of surgery just to stop the bleeding. Honestly, that's enough reason for me to stay away from them or even out of the ocean. Here is the giant barracuda. At first, they look just like normal fish blending into the beautiful underwater scenery. But don't let their appearance fool you, because the giant barracuda's hunting strategy is faster than a black belt karate chop. You see, barracudas have this incredible ability to stay motionless, and they hover in the ocean without wasting any energy. It's like they mastered the art of underwater yoga or something. But here is where things get cool and creepy. When they see an opportunity to strike, they strike faster than you can say fishy business. With just one flick of a tail, they dash towards their target in the blink of an eye. It's like they got a built-in turbo booster like nitrous oxide. But the speed isn't really what's impressive with the Great Barracuda, even though it's 35 miles an hour. Instead, it's the way they go from zero to 35 miles an hour in just a split second. What's even more mind-blowing here is the fact that the giant Barracuda can pull off these lightning fast speeds being five feet long and weighing over 50 kilograms. So the next time you're snorkeling, keep an eye out for these underwater torpedoes. All right, folks, let's take a look at the Blue Ring Octopus. Now I know what you're thinking. When did we go from the bottom of the ocean to another galaxy with this color changing thing that looks like a Pokemon that has got to be from another planet? But trust me, guys, I'm not making this up. This creature is 100% from Earth. In fact, it lives on the southern coast of Australia. I mean, it's Australia, bro. Does it make sense now? The Blue Ring Octopus loves to put on a show and flaunt its color changing skills. One second, it's blending perfectly in with its surroundings and you can't tell it's there. Then suddenly, it's glowing with bright blue electric rings, like a neon sign. But this shiny object is not something you want to get your hands on, as tempting as it may be. You see, this isn't your normal octopus who uses its color changing ability to hide from predators or use the ink to scare them away. This Pokemon has a much sinister trick up its eight sleeves. You see what I did there? Eight sleeves, because it has eight arms? My bad. Despite its tiny size, around five centimeters, this tiny guy has enough punch in it to kill 26 men in minutes. That's because the Blue Ring Octopus has a neurotoxin in it that's more potent than a truckload of caffeine on a Monday morning. One tiny nip from this guy, and you'll find yourself in a world of trouble. Its venom is actually 1,000 more times potent. Once an unsuspected victim gets stung by a Blue Ring Octopus, the venom starts paralyzing the nerves. And long story short, the victim eventually stops breathing since its muscles can't work anymore. And after that, it's dinner time for its prey or down a Davy Jones locker for you. But now you're probably wondering, where do these blue rings fit into this equation? The thing is, those rings turn blue when this tiny octopus gets threatened or when it feels angry. So when you see those bright blue rings, 
it's a sign that something's just got a dose of that venom. And since the venom is so potent, no predators bother even going near this thing. So the blue ring octopus doesn't even have to worry about being on somebody else's dinner plate. Typically, they live at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. So if you keep your hands to yourself, you should be good. The box jellyfish looks like a harmless ice cube with tentacles, but they mean business. Unlike other jellyfish who just float around in the ocean waiting for prey to come to them, the box jellyfish actually hunts down its prey with tentacles up to 10 feet long. This jelly belly releases an extremely powerful venom from its tentacles to paralyze its target, and then it's bedtime. Humans who are unfortunate enough to get stung by this creature will experience intense amount of pain, but that's actually only the milder side of the symptoms. But in most cases, the venom actually causes paralysis or even cardiac arrest in just a few seconds. And as you might have already guessed, you'll find them in the coastal waters of Australia, bro. What can be worse than stepping on a Lego barefoot? I mean, I can hardly think of anything worse, but let me show you this. How about a one and a half inch nail that's pointing straight up that releases venom once it's pierced your foot? Yeah, I know it hurts to even think about, but the stonefish is covered with these sharp nails throughout its spine. And by sharp, I mean it won't even matter if you're wearing shoes. And the worst thing about a stonefish is that you may never even know they're around you. Underneath the water, they have camouflage just like the coral reef around them. And as for the venom, it's enough to cause cardiac arrest within minutes. Leopard seals don't have the word leopard in their names because they're gray with black spots on them like a leopard. They're actually as vicious when it comes to predators. And in fact, the only natural predator higher up in the food chain than a leopard seal is the killer whale. Weighing up to 600 kilograms and being 10 feet long, leopard seals are known for their playful hunting tactics. Instead of going for the kill right away, they often toy with their prey. They chase him around in circles or toss him around like it's some sort of game. And then, the unfortunate prey becomes a sea puppy's chew toy. And they won't even hesitate to attack humans either. In 2003, a human was actually dragged underwater and killed by a leopard seal. Luckily, none of us are planning on going to the Antarctica soon, right? Because that's where they're located. Okay, where's the line for my ticket to Mars? Because if this thing is on the same planet as me, I don't want to be here anymore. I'm not trying to be rude, but this thing is hideous and scary at the same time. And if this giant mouth isn't unsettled enough, you'll get chills down your spine when you see how it attacks. Thanks to its almost flat body and appearance, it completely blends into the surface of the ocean and just waits there. And as soon as something comes near, it jumps up out of the water with its mouth wide enough to swallow a watermelon or maybe even your arm. It grabs whatever is in front of it. Fortunately though for us, this thing isn't toxic, but unfortunately for it, this gave the idea for some people to start eating it. And I don't care what you say, I'm never going near that thing or even eat it. Bro, why do people keep coming up with crazy things to eat anyway? So which one of these freaked you out the most? And are you ever going in the ocean again? Let me know in the comments. And while you're down there, consider giving this video a like and thumbs up. And if you haven't, subscribed already. Oh, and make sure one more thing, watch this video before you go.